One of the first elements of your speech that you need to think about is organizational strategy. Chapter 8 in your book goes over very specific organizational strategies you should use depending on what type of speech you're giving and the topic. Make sure that you think about those specific strategies when organizing your speech. But in this lesson, I want to go over why organization is so important to good public speaking. So first, let's talk about listening. Listening is something that's really hard to do. Even when you have the best intentions, it's very difficult to listen intently to someone. Think about a time when you knew you needed to listen to someone giving you important information, but you still found your mind wandering off during that person's presentation. What makes it so hard to listen even when we really want to? Put simply, it's your brain. Think about how many words per minute you speak. Do you have any clue? Do you think it's 50 words per minute? 100? 300? The truth is that most of us speak about 120 to 150 words per minute. Now how many words per minute do you think your brain is capable of hearing and comprehending? 50? 150? 500? Your brain can actually hear and comprehend anywhere from 600 to 800 words per minute. Don't believe me? Go to Angel and look at the video I've posted under this week's lessons. It's the National ba Debate Tournament Finals from 2013. Go to minute 32 and listen for a while. Then go to minute 55 and listen for a while. It's very difficult for us to understand what these two debaters are saying because we haven't trained our brains to work that hard. But everyone in that room, including the debaters, coaches, judges, and many onlookers, could understand every word. So what does that mean for you? It means that even when your audience is trying hardest to listen intently to you, it's very, very difficult because our brains are so much more capable than we ask them to perform. So that leaves milliseconds for your brains to think about what's for dinner, when you work next, what you're going to do this weekend, and a host of other things not directly connected to what you're trying to pay attention to. That's a pretty big hill to climb for the speaker. So by having a clear organization, you can help your audience listen better. If your organization is unclear or confusing, it gives the brain a sort of permission to think about other things, and you have a much greater chance of losing your audience. A good organization also makes it easier to remember your speech. If the audience member is having to expend energy just trying to understand what your main and minor points are and how they're linked to each other and your topic, that's time and energy they're not spending actually working to remember what you say. So a strong and clear organization will encourage audiences to remember your points. And when we talk about the kind of outline you're going to do in our class in general and for each speech, it's an outline that also encourages people to remember what you've said. A clear speech organization also makes your speech easier to follow, which helps everything from persuasive ability to retention by your audience members. Think of your speech organization as a map. A poor speech organization would be directions from Philly to our college by saying something like, go northwest, take the campus exit, and turn right. An excellent speech organization would be like turn-by-turn -turn directions from a navigation system or Google Maps. Your organization helps your audience members get from point A to point B and C and beyond. The better you map out that route for your audience, the more effective you'll be as a speaker. When thinking about your organization, you've also got to make decisions about what to add and what to leave out. On more than one occasion, you'll probably find that you have more information to share than you have time to share. So make sure that you choose the most pertinent main points for your audience instead of giving a speech with eight main points. That's simply too much to remember. You need to boil down your information to manageable amounts so that your audience can digest a maximum of eight minutes in this class. So choose main points wisely and eliminate information that's extraneous. Make sure that you state your ideas clearly. Use parallel language when you can so that your main points are similar and there's just structure. We'll talk about specifically how to list your main points in the speech when we talk about the general organizational structure I want you to use in class. Also, remember that your main ideas shouldn't overlap. They should be connected via your transitions, but they shouldn't overlap each other too much. You want each idea to be distinct from the others and to stand on its own, so make sure that your main points are distinct and clear. As I mentioned just a little bit earlier, parallel structure is best if possible. It's best because it helps your audience remember your main points if they're similarly structured. So for example, all of your main points could be structured to say, policy X is bad for our country because, and then each reason is distinct and different, but they are labeled similarly in your speech organization. 
Also make sure that your main points are balanced in terms of time. You don't want one main point to be 4 minutes and the other two main points to be 30 seconds each. To the extent that it's possible, make that sure that you spend about the same amount of time on each point. It's not always possible, of course, but a short main point can signal, even incorrectly, that you don't have much evidence to support that point. So if you're in a situation where you have a few main points that are very short, perhaps you can think of some way to combine them so that your main points are all similar in length. Your book goes into more detail about these specific types of organizational structure, but let me just briefly mention each one. The first is chronological, and it should be used when you want to talk about something in terms of history, present, and or future. This is when you talk about an issue starting from one point in time and moving to another. So the history of soda bottles would be a good example of a speech arranged chronologically because you're showing the changes in bottles over the years. A topical organization works best when there's no clear strategy. So in this example I put a few images that focus on our college. So perhaps one main point would be our faculty, another would be our sports team, and the final main point would be student activities like homecoming weekend. In these cases you're just discussing a few topics that are connected to the same thing but aren't discussed in relation to each other by anything in terms of time or space. A spatial organization is about physical space. If you're doing a speech that tracks the movement of something, a spatial organization makes sense. So for example, if you were doing an informative speech on how a trend crosses the United States from Los Angeles to New York City, or how HIV or any other pandemic made its way to the U.S. from another country, you'd want to use a spatial organization. A comparative organization is exactly what it sounds like it is. You're comparing two or more things. In an informative speech, maybe you're just giving us our options, like the options we have for majors in a certain college. In a persuasive speech, you'd compare and then make an argument about the one thing you've compared being better than the other things you've already talked about. Problem-solution organizations are, again, just what they sound like they should be. You first talk about a problem, and then you offer up a solution. You could offer up a number of solutions and then choose one to argue is the best, or just offer the best solution and support your argument. These are most often used in persuasive speeches. Causal organization is about cause and effect. Remember, though, that you need to be careful about cause and effect arguments. Understand that there's a difference between cause and effect and correlation. We know that sun exposure causes sunburn, but we have multiple theories about what is causing climate change. So you'll want to be careful about your language use so that you don't give someone an opportunity to attack your argument on a false cause and effect claim that you've made inadvertently. That's it for basic organization. Remember that the more organized and clear your speech is, the more memorable and persuasive you can be. And also make sure that you read the chapter on organization to get more tips and more specific ideas about how to use each kind of organizational structure.